Greetings. In this video, we will re-rig our block robot, and then we'll create a crash animation. For that crash animation, we will be cutting and pasting animation from joint to joint. So let me tackle that first in isolation. I'll hide my robot, and let's look at our basic ball, right, bounce. And we can take this animation and copy and paste it to this cube. There's a few caveats, a few essentials. One is you want to be on the key that you're pasting to. So if I copy, uh, if we look at the sphere animation, right, it's got a key at 0, 10, and 20. If I were to copy and paste it onto the cube and I was at frame 7, it would start at frame 7. So in the robot crash animation, you want to be very aware of the key that you're on when you paste. So let's copy this animation. We'll do that in the graph editor. I see my animation here. I'll draw a bounding box and we'll copy it. No, I'm in the graph editor. I'm not up here at edit. I'm at edit, copy. And we'll now select the cube. And I have one additional thing to do. I can't just paste it because it doesn't know where I would want to paste it to. So we will set an initial key. I've got the poly cube selected. I'm at frame zero. I'm going to be pasting into the translate Y. And so I'll set an initial key here. And it doesn't matter what the value is because it'll be overridden by the keys from the sphere in this case. But I've just uh, keyed that. I've got one key on my translate Y of my cube. And now, right, I'm at frame zero. I can come to edit paste and it pasted the animation from the translate Y sphere. It pasted it to the translate Y of the poly cube. And now they're both animated. So when we create our uh, ro block robot crashing, We'll simply key the waist joint, and then we'll be able to paste that to the neck, shoulders, elbows, and wrists. And then we'll create some offset variability in the graph editor itself. And so this is very common, where we lay out some keys and then really fine-tune, copy and paste in the graph editor. We are going to rebuild our uh, robot joint chain. And let's just take a look at what we did last week, right? We created three joint chains. And um, as we progress uh, with this block robot, at least, we're going to recreate this with a four joint chain setup. The reason that I didn't do that initially is because with a toe joint and a finger joint and the head top joint, students sometimes are confused at what the uh, foot should be parented to, what the hand should be parented to, and what the head should be parented to. So the first time through that we're talking about rigging with joint chains, I elect to do just three uh, to make sure that students aren't confused as to what the geometry is being parented to. But now that you've got that under your belt and you've played with it and created this run cycle, we'll create a slightly more robust skeletal chain. And those terminal joints uh, will help us for rigging purposes, uh, especially on the leg. Now, you should have saved your geometry with the handles positioned before you created the joints. If you did that, you could open that file right now. Um, if you didn't, let's talk about a few things that we can, um, a few strategies for um, getting rid of our animation um, and um, deleting uh, and unparenting. First, if we, I'll shift click the plus and we see all of our uh, geometry and joint chains there. And here it is running. If I come up and say edit, delete all by type channels, I'll get rid of all my animation. And that's what we want to do here. We want to zero this out and get rid of the animation so that we can re-rig uh, these block pieces. But as we move forward in the semester, you're going to have multiple items in the scene that all have uh, that may all have animation. And so we don't want to come to this global delete all by type 
because that would get rid of everything in the scene. In this case, it would be okay because the only thing in our scene animated is this robot. We want to use the by type, but we don't have anything selected. And so how can we just select our joints? Well, in the outliner, we can uh, limit what is displayed uh, much the same way that we can do this in the panel. So we'll come to the outliner, show objects, and we'll say only show joints. Now we can select all of the joints. Only the joints are selected. And we can come to edit, delete by type channels. Not all by type, right? We need to, we need to be more specific as we move forward because there'll be multiple things in your scene that are animated. We don't want to get rid of all the animation. In this case, we're saying we only want to get rid of the animation for these joints. And so we could say delete by type channels. And now if I press play, right, there is no animation. But when we deleted those channels, um, the character is in this mid stride. So how can we zero that out? Well, because we have only the joints selected, let me just do that again, right? Here is everything. I have only joints selected, but if I click off, you can see how difficult that would be to select those joints. But if we limit ourselves to seeing just the joints, then it's easy to select all the joints at once. And in this case, I could come and just type zero, right? I've clicked in the fields. We can see here the dot, dot, dot means there are multiple selections. And we'll just type in zero, and all those joints are zeroed out to their original position. And our uh, block meshes are um, positioned for uh, our new rig. Now if I just pick the joints and hit delete, right, all of the mesh that is parented goes along with it. So we want to unparent. Now if you pick a individual piece of geometry and come up to edit unparent, right, now if I pick my rig and were to move it, Right, that head has been unparented. That would be considerable to have to select all of those individual pieces and hit edit unparent, but we can do it all at once. Now, how can I select all my geometry? Well, very similarly, because if I draw a bounding box, I'll get the joint. If you look up here, remember that this is read left to right in terms of selection order. This is joints, and the, this is geometry. So if Geometry and joints are in the same place. Joints is on the left, uh, relative, and so if I draw a bounding box, I'll get the joints. So in this case, we're doing the opposite of what we just did a moment ago. We're going to say, I don't want to see joints in my view. This allows me to draw a bounding box, and if we were to look at it here, let's show everything. So now I'm able to right, just select the geometry those joints aren't selected. It's the opposite of what we just did a moment ago, right? Where we said, show me only joints, and I could just select all those joints, right, at once, and we see that they're selected. But I want to select my geometry, so I am going to say, show no joints. We'll draw a bounding box. I'm going to clear this just so that we can see we skipped all those joints in between I have only the meshes selected and now we can come to edit unparent and now our rig our joint chain is completely separate right we left our geometry behind so give that a shot right you want to do a save as and practice uh, zeroing out all of your joints practice uh, unparenting all of the geometry from the joints, and um, be sure you understand how to uh, isolate select or isolate a show display in your outliner. Say, I want to see only joints. We can clear that and see everything out here. We want to see uh, no joints. And then we can select all of that and use the by type delete channels or uh, unparent. So I'm going to get rid of that one, right? This was our three joint chain, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to replace it with a four joint setup. We'll come to the two side by side. We'll make these both our perspective. 
And in this view, I'm going to show my joints, which we, we don't have any, and we'll show in this view my handles. I'm going to say show none. Oops, I forgot to turn my handles on. Sorry about that. Let's pick these. Right, these pieces we're going to mirror over. And so we'll say display, transform display, selection handles. So remember we, we position the handles on the character's left hand side. And these are all still positioned properly. And I'm going to actually, let's turn polys off on this one and we'll come over here. And yeah, we'll, we'll have it this way. So I'm going to lay my joints down here and then we'll, we'll snap the fourth one in this view. So just to review, sorry, uh, I've got my two view. Both views are my perspective. In one of your views, uh, we're not looking at the polys. And in this view, we are looking at the polys. Now, uh, let's come to Create Joints. And the default, which we used last week, is Local Orientation. And in fact, I wanted to demonstrate something. So I'm going to jump back to my fourth, uh, my four view. Let's hide our uh, robot. OK, so I hid the robot. And then um, I created some basic hands here so that we can understand the difference between local and world space. So in default, when I reset the joint tool, you can see here that there's primary and secondary. And that means that the child position is orientating the parent. So you can see here, the position of this terminal joint, right, is driving this orientation, orientation, orientation. And this is very much like our four fingers. If I scrub through this, you can see this on the left with local. Here on the right, we've got world space. Note that all the little uh, crosses are straight up and down, left, right, up, down. Whereas on the left, we see a local orientation. And I've animated those joints rotating. They're both rotating on the same axis. But this rotates towards right the way that you would make a fist. And uh, you actually can't do this with your hand, the one on the right, right? You're, you're, we're breaking our pinky uh, in this example here. So this is local, and this is world. Now, when we begin rigging, it's much easier to rig in world space. That's why we're using this block robot uh, idea. Last week, several people weren't able to snap those joint chains exactly straight. And so you got, because we were working in the default, you got some local orientation, and that caused confusion because some joints were rotating on one axis, other joints were rotating on another. So as we build our four joint chain this time, we'll use world space. We'll click here, and as we lay down our joints, it'll be like this one on the right, where they're just straight up and down. And this will make this exercise easier as we cut and paste, uh, copy and paste uh, animation from joint to joint. It'll all be on the exact same axis and that'll limit, uh, limit the confusion. But as you begin to build more sophisticated robots, especially uh, your robot characters that are not standing just straight up and down, um, we'll need to use the local orientation. And that gives us a, um, some extra challenges, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll tackle those as they, uh, as they arise. So that is local versus world space. I'll bring back my robot. We'll go back to the two view. We said both were perspective. And we've got everything uh, available to us. So let's get into the rigging mode. Skeleton, create joints. And we're going to use orient joint to world. We'll v-snap, just as we did last week. V-snap shoulder, elbow, wrist. And then for our terminal joint, we're going to come to this view, and we're going to V-snap. So I V-snapped uh, that terminal uh, last joint. 
and return when we're done. Um, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll mess this last one up so I can show you in case you make this mistake. Uh, well, V snap, V snap, V snap. And then I want to snap right here. We're going to put the um, joint at the bottom of the foot. But let's, uh, I'm holding on the V key and I snap that. But let's say you miss. Let's say you, you click there and you said, uh-oh, I, I missed clearly. The middle mouse button allows you to reposition the last joint that you laid down. So I can use my middle mouse button and then just hold the V key and snap that. In fact, as I'm holding, using the middle mouse button, I can snap that anywhere I want. And that's where we want it. So if you go to snap that fourth terminal joint and you miss, right, because we don't have a handle out here. Um, we're just snapping right to the vertex position itself. Uh, or an edge position if you were using the C key. If you miss, use your middle mouse button and the V key to snap that in place. We're hitting return enter when we're done. And we'll do the spine chain. V snap, V snap, V snap. And then we want to give ourselves that fourth terminal on the head and so I'll hold the V in this view and that snaps it right in place. And we've got our joint chain set up. Let's get rid of our joints in this view so that we can select all these handles, right? Don't pick these because when we come up to display, transform, display, selection handles, this is the same place to turn on and turn off. So if you have an object selected that doesn't have a handle um, available, for instance, the character's right hand, arm, and leg, You'd be turning the handles on for that. So I just wanted to grab the things that have handles on and we're turning those off. Remember that we're in this instance we used handles as a snapping device. Handles are typically used to make the object the most selectable item in the view. Because we want to be able to select and animate our joints we don't want to leave those handles on. Handles were used as a snapping mechanism, a temporary um, snapping mechanism. Now that we've snapped things into place, we no longer need them. And in fact, they'd be in the way of selecting and animating the joints. Let's finish. All right, we pick the child first, shift select the parent, in this case the pelvis, lowercase p, shoulder, shift select the waist, lowercase p. And we can mirror this over, skeleton, right? I've got just the shoulder. I don't have it selected here. If we mirror it, with this selected, we have, we'll have two spines, which will visually won't be apparent, and then later as you're animating, uh, it will cause confusion. So be sure you're just on the shoulder, and we'll come to uh, mirror joint, just on the hip, not here. We'd be duplicating the whole skeleton if you were uh, on the root. We're on the hip joint, and we'll say mirror we're mirroring on the YZ. Remember that we modeled Z forward, and we've got that there. And with our two view, um, this should go real quick, parenting. And you want to test each time. Uh, so I'll maybe just select those two, and we can see that that's rotating, and they're rotating on the same axis. Um, And I'm hitting lowercase p, picking the child geometry. We can select these three, and they're all rotating on the same axis, which will make copying and pasting uh, easy for us. Uh, lowercase p, lowercase p, lowercase p. Now look, I almost picked the toe there. Uh, that was one of the reasons last week we just did a three joint chain so we didn't make that mistake. The foot goes to the ankle. We can go in the reverse order here. So uh, geometry, shift select the ankle joint, lowercase p, lowercase p, lowercase p. We'll pick those three joints and test. Right, All rotating on the same axis. And um, we'll Let's start at the bottom, a little bit easier to see, lowercase p, shift selecting, lowercase p. And there we've got our 
new and improved rig with four joint chains. Uh, all the joints are rotating on the same axis, which will, again, make cutting and pasting uh, nice and easy. So get to this point. Um, you might even want to do it a few times just to make sure you understand the process. And in the next section of the video, we will animate. Okay, so you've practiced that a few times, and now we're ready to animate. We're actually going to start the character in the positive Z direction. So we'll need to flip him around. I've got my root joint selected, and we can see that it's on the Y, so I'll just put 180. And we're going to have him start in that positive direction so that the impact uh, mimics the look of the bouncing ball. If I was coming from the negative to positive, it would be upside down. And I want you to see the correlation of the ball bounce uh, with this crash here. We're going to be starting our impact at frame 100. So the buildup to the impact is going to start at about frame 70. So we'll put 70 in here, our range slider. And we're going to start right at 70. And when we render, we'll render from frame 70. I did that because uh, if we had started at zero, we wouldn't have space for the lead up to the crash. And um, if I'd started at uh, some other frame, it might be confusing to see how the 246810 is working to create the frame. In fact, let's, let's just spend a moment here. Our frames are here, our timing is here, and the action has more space um, progressively increasing with an increase to generate these. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and it's just being added. So frame 100, we'll get 2, and that means that our next key will be at 102. That'll get 4, our next key will be at 106, 112, 120. So that space is getting larger and larger between keys. We're doing it just by 2s, you could do it by 3s, you could do it by any number, actually. But 2 will give us um, good spacing. In terms of our values, when that uh, crash happens, the character will lean over 90 degrees, and then we'll have it come back. We wouldn't want him to come all the way back to positive 90, right? Uh, as the energy dissipates, it'll be less and less and less and less. And so we're just multiplying each value by 0.66. That gives us about 60. 60 times 0.66 gives you about 40. And then we're alternating the negatives. Depending on um, which direction you created your character, I think actually this should be positive and negative. We'll see here in a moment. Um, I'm, yeah, I bet that's going to be positive. Let's come to frame 70 and we'll, we'll give it our character back, let's say 50 units. Your units may be different based on the size, but uh, fair distance so that we get this nice crash impact. I've got my root joint selected, right? This is how we drive the character around. And we'll hit, uh, let's be precise. I'm just going to key selected here. So translate Z 50 at frame 70. Our impact is at 100. And so we'll drive him and have his toes just hit there. And we'll key it. So I'm at frame 100, I've positioned, remember our one, two, three, move in time, manipulate the object, set the keyframe. So I moved in time to frame 100, I've manipulated the character, put his toes on the impediment, and we've keyed it. And let's just take a look at it so far. We just have two keys set. And with our flat tangents, he's slowing into place. Right, so this is right off the bat. We need to get into the graph editor and create this abrupt change in action, the same way that we did with the bouncing ball. So I'll pick my root joint, we'll come up to the graph editor, and there we see it, right? So it slows. We want to imagine that the character doesn't see the impediment and crashes into it. So we can grab move tool, middle mouse button. I've got the handle on the left hand side, and we can pull that up. And now we've got Right, this will be an abrupt stop. So accelerates and then 
hits it. Now, without the rebound, without the secondary animation, it feels like it's sticking, right? So at frame 115, we'll come and have him slide back, right? He's a rolling robot. He rolls into this impediment, hits it, and then rolls backwards a bit. So we'll key that, right? Move in time, manipulate the object, set the key. Uh, here is the position at frame 70. Here is the position at frame 100. Here is the position at 115. Now something funny is going to happen here. When we play it, now he's going through it, right? Now how can that be? We see his position at 70. There's his position at 100 and the position at 115. But he's going through it. Let's look at the graph editor again. And we can see why that happened. The flat tangent is trying to average this curve, right? This uh, tweening uh, curve. So we, just like our bouncing ball, want to select that key and come up to break tangents. So we'll click right on break tangents. And we'll grab this handle, move tool, middle mouse button, and pull that up. And if I want to get even closer, uh, I can. And that's, that's good. We don't want to go higher, right? So it'll hit, hit the impediment and then slow into a rear position. And now let's watch this. Rolls forward, hits it, and comes back. You, depending on how robust your graphics card is, you might want to play blast, right? The play blast will give us the true timing it's playing a little bit more smoothly than my graphics card is. So the Play Blast gives you a true sense of your animation. And so there we have the impact. And now we're ready to use our chart to animate the waste coming forward. Now our impact happens at 100, but we're going to have uh, a little bit of anticipation. So we're going to come to frame 98 to set the first key. You see that here. So I've got 98 selected. This should be rotate X. And I, yeah, uh, this is going to be positive. So I've got my negatives uh, wrong here. This should be positive 90, negative 60, positive 40, negative 25. So uh, I apologize for that. Um, but we'll remember it. And oops, and I left him rotated forward. We're going to come to frame 98. And he is standing straight up at frame 98 on the rotate X and we'll key it. Then at frame 100, this is where we'll start our chart. It's going to come to 90 and we'll key it. Then at frame 102, what is the value? 60. And uh, we'll go negative 60. And we'll key it. And 106 is next, 106. What is the value? It'll be positive 40 for me. And we'll key it. And then 106 to 112. 112 is negative 25. And so I'll speed through setting these keys. Okay, and then um, 210, right, we'll go to positive 1 for me. And then let's say we'll end it at 232, and we'll just zero this out. So 232, it's 0 0.9, right, this is very, very uh, small increments. So we'll end at 232, um, and we can watch this now. Right, and so there we get the crash. And that energy flows. We have greater spacing between the frames, and then we have lesser values for those frames. And we see that energy, that impact, and then it flows through 
uh, at least one increment to the chain. And now we'll be able to copy and paste. So with joint 28s, uh, the waist joint selected, we can come to the graph editor and uh, we can select everything. And remember when we copied from the ball to the cube, the, the two caveats. We want to be on the frame that we're pasting to. So we want to be on uh, 98. And then uh, let's, let's do our shoulder first. Our two shoulders and neck are equidistance. They're one uh, indentation. They're one down the chain. So they're all going to have these same offset values that we'll uh, set here in a moment. But I've, I've got the way selected. I'm going to grab everything. I'll come to Edit, Copy. Not, not Edit up here, but Edit on the Graph Editor. Edit, Copy. And then the second of the two things that we have to do, right? We have to be on the frame. And then for what we're uh, keying, or what we're copying to, what we're pasting to, excuse me, uh, we want an initial key. So we need to have an initial key there. In the lab video, I don't think I do a very good job of specifying this. So be sure that what you're pasting to has an initial key. So I'm at 98. I'm currently at 98. And I've just set a key on joint nine, uh, on my shoulder joint. And then I'll simply come to Edit Paste. And that animation that we just did on the waist is now also on the shoulder. And we can evaluate that. And it's going the opposite direction. right? We want that arm to flow forward. So what we can do is in the graph editor, and let's move this over here so we can see it. We can just reverse all the positive and negatives at once. So I'm going to draw a bounding box around everything. And I'll come, not the frame, but the value. And right at frame 98, that value is 0. But let's come here just so we can watch this happen. We'll type in the multiply equals negative one. And when I hit return, right, we see that what was negative is positive, well, what was positive is now negative. We're not going to worry about that penetration there. Um, we could just make this, let's come and we'll make this a little bit shorter. And we can see his arm comes forward and back and forward and back. If we play it, right, it's exactly the same. What we want to have is the energy flow through a chain. So we're actually going to offset this animation. Let's look at both of them together. So right, I've only got two things animated here. The waist comes forward and that arm comes forward. If we come to the graph editor, we can see right that animation there. I'll come to my right 19. You can see why um, labeling this is important. I actually selected the wrong one because I don't have them labeled. Um, but we'll pick the shoulder. We make sure that we've got the shoulder here. And I'm going to select everything. And we're going to move it down three frames. So rather than at 98, it'll be starting at 101. So there's a slight delay. And we'll, do, we'll use this to copy and paste to the other shoulder and to the head, right? So that they're uh, all three frames later than the action that happens on the waist. The elbow will be three from there, so six total, right? So this is three frames down, this will be six frames down, and then the wrist will be nine frames down. And you'll get this nice uh, chain reaction or kind of wave reaction as that energy flows through the system. So how do we move it? Well, we're going to select it all, move tool, Shift middle mouse button, right? And if you shift middle mouse button, pull horizontally, you're changing timing. If you shift middle mouse button, 
go up and down, you're changing values. We don't want to change the values. We like the values. We just want to change the timing. So we're going to hold down the shift key and uh, move this one. Oops, let me grab that. One, two, three. I'm going to hit undo and do that again. One, two, three. So we just moved it down three frames. You can see now it's starting at 101. And if we play this, right, there's a bit of a uh, bit of a delay. It makes it more lively. And when we get the elbow and wrist and everything else going, you'll see that it really feels like a chain reaction. So let's copy this to the other shoulder. We'll Right, I've got my shoulder selected. It's been shifted down three frames. We'll copy it. And we know that we need to have that shoulder selected. We'll come to 101, where we're going to paste. And we're going to set our first key on the attribute. And then we can hit paste. And now both arms are animated. And there's right offset three frames, so it gives it a nice chain reaction. Let's do the head. So we're going to come to 101, right? And it's going to get the same because it's they, these three are equidistant from their parent. So it's going to have that same three frame offset. So we can just paste it. So I'm at frame 101. We'll key our initial, and then we can just come to paste. It's still in the clipboard um, and now the head is coming back that's all right you could uh, use the negative uh, the asterisk or multiply equals negative one to see what that looks like going the opposite way but I think that's about right watch that again Okay, let's keep going. We can come down uh, to the elbow. We'll come to 101 because we're gonna we're gonna lay it down and then offset it after the fact. So I'm at 101. Got the elbow selected. I'll key it, and then in the graph editor, we'll paste it. Let's just test it here so we see that working. It's going the right direction. Come back to 101. We're going to grab everything and we're going to move it three frames. So it's starting at 101, we're going to move it 102, 103, 104. So shift middle mouse button, one, two, three. Uh, if we grab that now, we see that it starts at 104. And we'll see we're getting this nice chain reaction now. We'll go ahead and come to 104, pick the other elbow. Uh, we'll give it our initial key. And in the graph editor, we'll hit edit paste. The offset, right, we, we just generated that offset. It's starting at 104. There's nothing above the head. If, if maybe there was something sitting on the head, that would take this, right, because it's 1, 2, one, two away, but we don't have anything on the head, so we're just doing the elbows. And now you just get that nice chain reaction. And then finally, uh, we'll copy this one. Edit, copy. We'll come to the wrist, right? Wrist joint. Make sure you've got the joint selected. At 104, we'll put down the first key. And we'll paste. We see that that works. We'll move this down three units. So it'll start at 107. So shift middle mouse button with the move tool. One. Now mine got locked up again. So I'm reselecting here. One, two, three. So this is now 107. We come here and look, right? It's at 107. 
and we'll see that that is the end of our chain and that is a real nice feel to it and we'll just get it onto the other side because it's offset we will select this one edit copy we need to uh, right we are at 107 we'll give ourselves the initial key window animation graph editor and we'll say paste and that's it so even though it's a block robot right just as primitive poly meshes as you can have we've breathed some life into this character uh, it feels as though it's a crash and it feels as though that energy is dissipating through the system a chain reaction our impact right begins here at frame 98 these right 98 99 100 101 so these are at 101 these are three down from that at 104 and then 107 so you could think of it as 0 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 and that's what gives that chain reaction feel down through the system now to make this loop let's actually let's see how many frames we would need so let's have him get back to his original position that way we can create an animated gif that loops perfectly right right now it jumps back to that original position so let's have him actually uh, go in reverse we can just let's say start at 215 so I'm gonna set a key here uh, I'm on the root if you didn't follow that I'm on the root and we're just gonna put him back to his original position so that we get a nice clean uh, loop for our animated gif so I'm just gonna hit s there right so we've bookended 115 to 215 that's where we're watching the chain reaction and then let's have him just go in reverse and what is this value so at frame 70 the translate Z is 50 and so we'll just type that in there and we'll just we'll just hit S on the keyboard so now right reverses back and we'll get a perfect loop here right we'll do a vector render so just a reminder so you would come here we'll say Maya vector we're just uh, using include edges uh, here is your path let's call this uh, robot roll crash jpeg name dot number dot extension and then here's what's a little bit different we're going to start at frame 70 and we're ending at frame 250 we're going to render the perspective view let's do this at 512 again so we'll try to get everything in there We'll make our perspective white if it isn't already. Environment and it is already white. We just want to make sure we can see everything. So at 70, right? So compose your view. Let's do just a, a quick render. So there we've got our nice uh, vector render on white. And I'll just play this to make sure we can see everything. So his head is coming out of the view. So let's let's back. Up a little bit we want to see all of the action so there we go and then reverse is back and we'll have a nice loop so just real quick on the render settings we're in vector the only thing we changed is we said include edges we've named it JPEG name dot number dot extension our frame range is from 70 to 250 we're animating our, our we're rendering our perspective and we're doing a little 512 square there is your path 
and we made sure that our perspective camera that we're rendering has a white background. All right, render that out, um, uh, create an animated GIF, and post it uh, to both the assignments page and the bulletin board, and uh, questions in the discussion forum. Have a good one.